Hey guys, how's it growing? Jackson here with another video. It's been quite a long time since I made a video, and uh, even though it's not the best day to do one, since there's some construction right across the street, and it's super rainy, I mean not super rainy, super windy today, um, but I kind of wanted to talk about my Australian finger lime tree and do a little bit of a care, talk about whatnot since it's fruiting and maybe show you guys what the inside of the fruit looks like. And then maybe do a little bit of an update around, around the backyard or with the plants and whatnot. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I moved everything out in this corner um, just cause it's really hot and I'm not gonna use the greenhouse. It's right over here. Nothing's in it. Got some, uh, some soil. But uh, yeah, everything's over here doing really good. Here is my big Australian finger lime tree. I mean, it's not big, but the biggest one I got. I got another one I got like maybe a, a month ago now. But this is a smaller one I got from a local nursery, and I just really wanted to get it because. Uh, maybe to do grafting and whatnot onto it and then also just because it looked really didn't look very good so i mean it doesn't look very good right now not very many leaves but um yeah so i picked that guy up i picked up another one from that same nursery so i got two on that day and uh gave one to my girlfriend's brother for his house so maybe he'll have some australian finger limes but uh yeah, you can see right here, we got some little Australian finger limes growing. We got some flowers popping. Um, let's see, some bigger ones right over here, right there. And so this guy is, um, I believe the variety on it is Alstonville. Uh, it's just, gets not very big size for fruit, maybe, uh, inch or so and the fruit looks ripe when it's really dark um, but yeah this is uh, the botanical name is uh, citrus australica I don't know how to say it but I wrote it right there in the tag I need to write the that Alstonville yeah I didn't write it down but uh so these guys do, these guys are from uh, Australia, like the name suggests, and um, they do really well here in uh, California. I'm here in Zone 9B, so this is like the perfect, perfect little area for this guy. Um, uh, like the soil, they like nice well-draining soil, so anything with a decent amount of perlite, some sort of material to allow for aeration um, and you can just care for it just like how, just care for it just like pretty much any other citrus I mean uh, fertilize it every three months or so and then yeah you're gonna get fruit pretty much right off the bat so because a lot all these guys you're gonna find at the stores are all grafted trees like right here you'll be able to see this so the graft is right here, that little, that side di diagonal cut. And so now this is a rootstock, I believe. What's the rootstock? Um, rootstock is, oh wait. Um, mm, I don't remember, but I usually use, um, same root stock for a lot majority of the citrus uh but anyway yeah that's the graft right there you're gonna probably get a grafted tree i got this guy this guy was from a nursery in sacramento but um they got this tree from uh four winds growers i've talked about talked about them before they grow a lot of citrus and um yeah uh so so is the other one the other one is also a four winds growers um Australian finger lime but 
Yeah, these guys, the fruit takes quite a long time to ripen. About 10 months is what I've um, seen online and kind of noticed from, from growing it this year. Um, this was the first, this tree right here was the first tree that kind of got me into into the tropical stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a really good tree. It's a nice understory tree. At, in the beginning, it's gonna want some shade, uh, but as it gets bigger, like this guy probably can take the full sun if I had it out, out there. Yeah, I just added some plants over there. You can see that, uh, that apple tree right there. The branches are kind of, um, kind of drying up. So I'm gonna have to cut some branches off. I think it's just too, too hot. But I added a bunch of plants right in the backyard, so. We'll see. We'll see. I'll probably add some more edibles later. But. Anyway, back to this guy. Um, like I said, this guy likes well-draining soil, um, regular watering. Um, it's a pretty hardy plant. can take zones 8 to 11, I believe. I think that's what it said. And then, I mean, if you have it indoors, it could do a lot, take a lot better zone zonage I guess um but yeah this guy seems to flower almost almost all year round uh you can see all this all the white on on the, the leaves and the branches that's that's from the water the water isn't the best here where I am so it's gonna get some spottage on there if you have shitty water like I do um but yeah, this guy is pretty much fruity almost all year long, or flowering almost all year long. I think it stops in like that transition period between um, uh, winter and fall. But honestly, it started reblooming back in February and then kind of stopped. But now it's back on it, and then and then it stops a little bit, then goes back on, stops a little bit. But yeah, so I'm gonna have some quite a bit of fruit on the way for, for my friends to try and my family to try, so that's gonna be fun. Uh, but yeah, these guys are really good. Um, you know, I might as well just show you guys what else I got over here. So right here, this is like a 10 gallon of zucchini. I just put a bunch there and it's it's taken off. Some big, big leaves on this, really big leaves. Um, so Mara's finally waking up. It took a long time for her to wake up. Let's see. The Chilean myrtle. It's packed with flowers. You can see them all right there. We got some that are blooming. Those look really nice and they smell great. Um, let's see. I just got this guy the other day from my nursery that I work at. Um, this is a, a strawberry papaya. Uh, I'm probably gonna plant this out in the out in the yard, so we'll see how that does. I'm I'm not really too keen on pi uh, papaya, but uh, it was a decent deal for getting a employee discount. <laughs> so I was like, might as well pick it up and you know add it to the portfolio of growing, you know. And then this right here, this is ring pour lime. Um, I got this in sack. So we'll s I'm really excited about trying the fruit eventually. Um, but it split down the middle. I don't know how it split, but the, these two branches were quite a bit apart. So I just got some um, parafilm tape and uh, kind of taped it back together. Let's see. This Jabo looking great. The leaves are, are funky just because I think it was getting scorched before I had these umbrellas up, but the bark looks great on it. It's really good. Uh, Tahoe Gold, it's doing, doing fine. Looks like it's got maybe a few fruit gonna, gonna pop up this year, or next year, I mean. But uh, anyway, here's the grapefruit. This draft didn't take. I'm gonna have to cut that off later. Seems like this Nagami Kumquat though has taken. So 
still looks good. And then, same with this uh, lemon scion. It looks like it poke it out. So, we'll see. I don't know if I should rip off all these flowers or not to, uh, you know, save that energy, but we'll see. I probably will, to be honest. I'm not worried about having the fruit from this tree. I could wait on it a while. Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, I mean, I got some pickups. I guess I, I'll show the, I have a, bleh, I have a grow tent now. And uh, I got a bunch of stuff in there, a bunch of Jabotacabas in there. Here's that uh, Eugenia Myrtifolia doing good. Started to pop out some, uh, some flowers again. And then, let's see. I'll just pull this up. But this avocado is doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. The miracle fruit trees doing pretty good now. Started to bounce back. Putting out some new growth. It looks really good. Um, oh, and that Fatanga tuba. Yeah, look not ah, is he gonna focus? I don't think it's gonna focus. Oh, there we go. But you see that? Some new growth on my Fatanga tuba. Cool buddy took so long but now it's doing good this is just a little uh, red Suriname cherry I got it's doing really good pushing in a lot of new growth um, the this guy not doing very good it's still alive but uh, it's that uh, Zill's dark Suriname cherry but um so we'll see if it bounces back just got this strawberry guava maybe a month or so ago. It's pushing out some flowers, so we'll see, we'll see. And then there's this. Ooh, baby, look at all that new growth. Isn't that amazing? I got, um, this is a uh, Grimmel Jabotacaba. I got that from um, Pete at uh, Green Dreams. So, that's really cool. Uh, let's see, let's see. The reds are doing good. Always pushing out new growth. Yeah, nothing's stopping those guys. Seedlings, they're doing okay. Need to water them. That, uh, <laughs> that little guy's dunzo. I think I overwatered him. I shouldn't have had him over there. Because it was just getting, I water these guys every day, every morning. So, um, I just think it was, it was a little too much for that um, pine or whatever. Oh, and check this out. Look at this. See that? That's my persimmon that I got from work for $3.99, bro. Look at those big leaves. Huge. Ginormous leaves. It's doing so good. Yeah. So, yeah. This is doing good. Um, and let me show you guys some of that other stuff. I got, I got a planter over here. Um, let's see. The apple tree. Looking good, finally. And let's take a look at this one. See, look at that. Some dead branches. Yeah. Not too good, not too good. Ngami's doing good. Avocado. What is this little avocado? Oh, Stuart. Stuart's doing good. Pakistani mulberry. Doing phenomenal. Actually, we'll probably pull this one off right here. Do that. Yeah, oop. I'm gonna 
just go. Mmm. Nice and sweet. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Pakistani mulberry is pretty good. Another one? Well, half one. Mmm. Mmm. Just like grapes. Got another one right there, almost done. Cherries look good. Looks good. Some variegated kumquat. Putting out some new, uh, some new fruit. We got some right there. We got some right there. And yeah. I need to add way more edibles. There's nothing here. It's all landscape stuff. So. Well, I guess you could eat the daylilies, but other than that, really nothing. So let me show you this little planter box real quick before I uh, get the Australian finger line. Better. Yeah, but gotta water this but uh yeah we got some uh we got some strawberries right to that right bottom right we got some uh habanero and then jalapeno zucchini some potatoes right here we got a sunflower another one red and white onion right there we got cilantro and then three different types of mint but uh Everything's doing good over here. Just uh, just dries up really quickly. Those potatoes are taking off, but um, yeah, looks good. And hold on, just one second. I'm gonna go grab one of those uh, finger limes and then uh, I'll bust it open for you guys. So just hold on one sec. And we're back. So this is what uh. And those Alstonville finger limes. It's about a about an inch or so. But um Yeah, I'll show you why they call it citrus caviar in just a second. See that? Isn't that pretty? See all those little vesicles? They're all, so once you squeeze it, they're all kind of individually uh, break apart like that. And honestly, this isn't the best variety. It's kind of limey, kind of like soapy in a way. But um, it's definitely interesting. Definitely something to try. Try it on some caviar. I mean, not on some caviar. Try it on some sushi, try it in your salad, you know. Yo, yo, yo. And one more update. So I'm here at my uh, little grow tent. 69 degrees, 73% humidity. And yeah, I got this thing packed to the brim with, uh, with mostly jabos, but I got some cherimoya, some adamoya. See those cherimoya right in the back right there? They're doing really good. It's a nice little community pot. Um, Barbados cherries growing up, growing nice now that it's in here. Uh, a lot of little, new little shoots. Uh, Blue Vexador is doing good. Right here. Got these back from my friend. Um, for Trantha something. I don't even know what for Trantha it is, but... Uh, they're doing good. Getting it some new, uh, new leaves. I don't know. It's probably gonna lose its leaves and then grow some more. And then this, I don't even know. I think it's Novak. Petrantha. It's doing really good. Pushing out some new growth. Um, now I have about eight varieties of Jabotacaba. These little seedling cherimoyas, right there, right there. Some little sabras doing nice. 
And then right here, what? Could you guess what this is? Could you, could you? Nah, you can't guess what it is. Could you guess what happened to it? So this is a grafted tree. I got this from Adam, like always, getting everything from Adam. And uh, it's a very, very, very special variety. Could you guess? Could you guess? Could you? Well, um, 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 um it's an anomaly, Jabotacaba. What? You got an anomaly? Yeah, I got an anomaly. So, yeah, this is my anomaly, Jabotacaba. It's a grafted Jabotacaba onto uh, Sabra Rootstock. And uh, it looks amazing. Just got this guy a few weeks ago from your boy Adam, Flying Fox Fruits, and uh, I'm really happy with what I got. It looks freaking amazing. Can't wait to see this guy grow. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we get some fruits real quick from this guy. It's a nice grafted tree and uh, super super rare. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, just want to show you guys what's in what's in the little grow tent. Not much, but uh, quite a bit if you know what I mean. So, uh, hope you guys have a good day. Like and subscribe. Hope you like this video, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Peace.